In this video, I'll show you how to recreate this category selection animation from the new Apple Mail app. Here's a list of emails, each with an assigned category, which you can't see right now. And these categories are defined up in this array right now with a name, display name, an accent color, and an icon. So first, I'm going to render out this list of categories. So under this H1, I'm going to take the categories array, map over it, take each category. For now, let's just render this out in a simple div. Inside here, I'll have another div and I'll just put the category icon inside. And let's remove this extra parentheses. And below this, I will do a span and render out the display name of the category. Okay, we got them in a simple list. Let's make this look a little bit better. So I'm gonna surround this entire mapping with a div so we can lay this out a little bit better. And I'll give it a display of flex and a gap of four. So now it's horizontal. And on each category div, I'll give it flex, justify, center, gap of two, give it some vertical and horizontal padding. This is going off the page, but we'll fix that later. Now let's actually make these active when we click on each of these categories. So first I'm gonna store the active category in a state variable. So up here, I'll create active category, the active category, and Initially, let's just set the first one, which will be primary. Then on this div for the category, first I'll put an on click listener and just call set active category and pass in the category's name. And just so we can actually see what this is doing, let's just add a style tag and set the background color. We'll just say that if a color, so I'll say if the active category is equal to the category's name. Then I'll just set this to say blue, else can be transparent. Okay, we see that's blue if we click each of them. Okay, so this is now all hooked up. To make this easier to manage, I'm gonna abstract some of this styling and layout into a different component that we'll bring back into here. So let's just go down here and create the component, call it category badge. Let's have it take a few props. So we'll first set if it's active or not. By default, it will be false. Pass an accent color, which we'll use for this background of each category. Pass the children. We're going to take an ID, which we'll need in a little bit. And then we'll take the remaining props. And because we're using TypeScript, we need to specify the types of each of these. So is active is an optional Boolean. Accent color, your string. And we'll union this with just generic HTML attributes for a div. So react.html attributes for an HTML div element. Then inside this, let me just take the div that we had previously. I'm just going to copy it, paste it down here, remove some of these children out, make it children, remove the on click. We'll just for now remove the style attribute and we'll add it back in. And then up here, let's just replace this with category badge, move style and class name, just have the on click. Now we need to pass in an accent color, which we can do here. Accent color will be equal to categories, accent color. Okay, now let's add some more styles. So let's add back in the styles if the category is active. So let's pass in the is active prop. Now set that equal to if the active category is equal to category name. And I'm also just gonna go ahead and pass in a quick ID here, category.name. And because we're mapping over the set of categories, best practice, let's also add a key and also make it category.name. Okay, let's do some more styling. So inside here, I'm gonna make this class name a literal to so make it a little bit dynamic. Back picks, make this a string literal. I'm gonna say font, semi bold. We're going to do a little bit of transitioning of some colors. So I'll add the transition colors so that CSS animations come for us automatically. And just to make this size correctly, I'll then do a conditional. If is active is true, then let's make it flex one. Else for now, nothing. Well, this class name, let's add some more styles here. I'm going to add a border radius to 24. Background color. And I'll say again, if it's active, then we'll use the accent color. Else we'll set it to a simple gray value, E5. And let's also update the text color. So if is active is true, let's make it white. Else we'll just inherit 
Okay, so now this is already looking pretty good. It's still going off the page. And to fix this, we'll just hide the text if it's not active. Now to make this component flexible, I'm going to use a data slot attribute to target this span tag, which will then add some styles to in the category batch component. So here I'm going to add data slot and I'll call it label. Now we can query for this in the CSS. So down here, after this transition colors, I'll query it by using CSS selectors. So I'll say a direct child or data slot is equal to label. I can apply first, I'm going to apply transition all. And then this conditional render, if I'm not flex one, I'm going to paste this and instead of transition all, I'm going to say this should be hidden. So the text will be hidden if it's not active. So now text is hidden. And if I click on each of these, well, nothing's happening. And that's because we're not actually passing through this on click. We need to pass the remaining props. So now if we try this, these are now appropriately styling. The animation right now is not looking great. This is default CSS animations. Now let's make that much better. So I'm going to go up here to the surrounding div of all these categories. I'm going to make this a motion component, and I'm simply going to add the layout property here to turn on layout animations. Then I'm going to go here into the category badge, and I'm going to make this a motion component as well. To turn on the layout animations, I need to pass it the layout ID property, and I will just use the ID that we pass in. And this is how Framer Motion is going to track the movement of each of these components. Now you notice there's an error here. That's because we need to update the type definition of the properties. So instead of react.html attributes, I'm going to pull in the HTML motion props from Primer Motion, and we need this for a div. And then when I click the categories, look at that, we're getting much better layout animations. Now there's still some weirdness happening with the icon and the text, so let's fix that. So up here, I'm gonna make this div a motion div, and I'm also gonna make this span a motion component. And on the icon, I'm also going to add the layout property, which will help your motion to stop messing with size and scaling of it. So now when I click through, the icon's not morphing anymore. Now this text is still not great. And just to fix this, I'm going to go down to here. And by default, I'm just going to set the text color of this data slot to be white. Therefore, it won't keep animating back and forth. So now when I go here and click, the text now is not flashing from black to white. To tie this all together, let's actually filter this email list based on the category that's selected. So right now, this is just mapping over this emails variable, which is a state variable, which is by default set to all emails. So let's create a use effect. And in this use effect, we'll just say set emails to all emails being filtered. And each filter element will be if the category is equal to the active category. And let's make sure to run this whenever active category changes. And it's complaining because I need to move this state variable above the use effect. Okay, so now this is filtered. And now when I switch categories, we got the emails filtering appropriately. And just because I feel like it, let's also just animate this list as it keeps changing. So I've gone ahead and updated the surrounding div of the emails, made a motion component, add some animations around the vertical position, the opacity, and also a blur effect when we're exiting. And we made a spring animation and then surrounding all this in the animated presence with the appropriate mode of pop layout to make the exit animations trigger. So now when we switch, it's a nice little transition between each of the lists. So that's it for this video. YouTube thinks you should check out this video next. Leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.